All right, guys. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, performance, minor performance work. This is the LPR piston. It's down in. It's a decent size. It's actually a pretty damn good LPR piston, but I want to eke out a tiny bit more performance out of it, so we're going to lighten it a tiny bit. Just have my starter bit. This is my little lathe. I think I can film a little nicer on this. But it's not as straight as my big lathe. So I'm using a 0.189 drill bit, so a tiny bit over 3 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to grab my caliper real quick. Sorry about that. The o-ring groove is about point, uh, quarter of an inch back, so we're going to push it about a quarter of an inch. I don't really want to drill in past the o-ring groove. I just don't want to weaken it too much. But that'll be it for the first part. Just made it that hair lighter, and that's a linear acceleration relationship, so it accelerates linear linearly based on the, the mass of it. So that's effectively eking a little more performance out of it. Grab the next piece. This is the HPR piston again, Dalrin, decent size. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to complain about these kind of generation bob along pistons. They are pretty nice. Again, let me go to the O-ring groove. Point three. So I'm just going to go a little bit more than a quarter inch. I'm going to up my size. I'm not going to tighten down too hard either. It's Dalrin. That's small for this. Let me up my size a little bit. So I'm not going to use a starter on this. This is a 5 16 drill bit. Make sure I'm zero. It doesn't need that material at all. It's just extra weight. So we're get, we're doing a little bit of weight savings on it. The cup rides at the edge in there, so we're not affecting anything doing that. And if we are, we'll just remake the piece. It's not a very complicated piece to make in Delrin, so that's not bad. Uh, I'm gonna get the next piece. This piece is the guide, so we're going to clamp it on the small piece. We're going to get a very small drill bit. We're just going to drill a hole right down the center because we want to relieve air pressure.
This is going to be .086 drill bit. I'm just picking them at random basically, just depending on what fits. The first time I'm even thinking about doing this is right now, so. We already have a center started for us, so. I'm partially a bit this small because that one does like a whole bits in. With the So what that does, that leaves an air hole to have more volume so the air has more room to compress. We're going to try to put a small hole through the actual bolt at the bottom as well to give it a permanent vent so it can vent the chamber. I'm going to drop a tiny hole in the side here as well, which I'll do with this 086. And... hand drill Let's hole right in so we have a side hole that goes into our main port because the main port can bottom out just to make sure it doesn't done forever Just a little side vent. We have a through hole vent. And that's it for this piece. I'm going to set up to do the bolt pin or the actual bolt. The velocity adjusting bolt goes in the bottom of this thing. So I'm going to just put a sock in, drill it, tap it, put the bolt in, drill through the bolt. And then that will be done with the regulators and we'll move on to the next bit. All right, guys, I just put a piece of. Uh, aluminum in, drilled and tapped it for quarter 28, which is the right size for this bolt. Let me get another small drill bit. I go 0 0.07 on this one. No particular reason other than it's tiny. And we're just trying to put a vent hole in it. It's stainless steel, so you gotta be careful when drilling it, especially with this tiny bit. We hope to not fail doing this.
we're through. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just a little drill hole through. That vents that whole side of the chamber better. So you don't get additional air compression with the spring tension. You see a much more linear spring rate. Because of that, that should boost our performance a little bit. And with that, our regulator work is done. We are going to switch over to the mill and make the a little adapter plate that we're going to need to make. So that's going to be next. Okay, I hope this is a decent view for you guys. We're going to just machine this off of ice. It's uh, be fairly stout, fairly big, so I'm not too concerned with that. You know, deflection or anything like that in this. I'm going to first just face the top of it. And... I don't really even take dimensions yet. We're just kind of going to do it on the fly. it real quick I think this is a quarter inch end mill let me just double check metric so it's a five millimeter end mill huh I don't even know why I have this oh well we're gonna face the front off most the best we can get a bottom height that we can live with. And zero that and then go from there.
ideally I should be going with a bit that's bigger, but I don't have anything queued up, honestly. So I can convert this to standard. One nine eight. Uh, I don't have my phone on me, but so we gotta go point seven one to go the full. <laughs> Just to get a touch here. Point six two. And you go to point four. Ooh. Alright, this is gonna take a little bit. Just try to take off. Point oh four. Better into the action here. A little bit of nature's nectar. Let's try another point four.
spot check. That's not working too bad, considering how small the bit is. Uh, if you want something a little bit fatter normally, because it gives you a little more eye or moment of inertia in the tool bit to make it stiffer. 0.54. All right. Another 0.4. Check the bottom to see if we're coming out real hard on the bottom. Five oh two. No, it's not bad. All right, so we have enough rigidity, I guess, with this kind of cut to do it this way. So let's take another point four because that seems to be working for us. And that brings us down to uh, point four six. final roughly around 0.2 or 0.02 rather I'm saying 0.4 is 0.04 422 0.421 two and a touch <laughs> back to zero. So that's zero. Let me set this for zero. Let's 
machine is 2.5 millimeters off of zero in both directions. So I can go back and hit this tip here. And I gotta do some math. I don't have my calculator, so I might have to run down and get it. Cut's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Let's see how square we are across the part. 401.5, 401, 401.5-ish. Pretty square. I didn't really even square up the, the chuck that much. It's, or the vice rather, it's just what it is. Put the drill chuck in. Using my Tormach inserts here, three quarter inch collet in this thing, three quarter inch uh, R8 spindle collet. Let's see. It was like This thing's roughly, oh, well, kind of on roughly like 0.2 inches. So we're gonna go in 0.1 each. And now we're zeroed up on this corner. Sanity check. bit perfect I don't think it's the right size but we're gonna hit these two holes first So we'll find an appropriate size. Fortunately, you guys are kind of in my drill bits right here where I have the camera. Big. Just right. There. So, roughing this. Great to rough precision machinery. Point one four seven five one four Okay. I'm like point oh five.
first holes in. So we know this guy is 0.4. That's 0.05. So there's 0.35 left to this tip here. So we got to move 0.3 to get to the other side. So that's 0.3. That should relatively. Yep. Guess where we need to be. And now between these guys, roughen it again. Well, I said it's 0.71 to the other side. That was 0.1475 or 0.15. So you're talking about 0.55 left from the center of that to this end wall. So you go 0.15 off of that roughly, and you have a difference of 0.4. So you're going to run 0.4 and then. I error uh, plus 0 0.025 to get down to where I need to be. So. Two. Three. So roughly there. That's for shits and giggles. Tiny bit too far. There went one more too much. One way to do it. Wouldn't advise that, but uh, close enough. over on that that's upsetting but oh well just a touch past shouldn't actually matter because I got most of the hole there but kind of hurts the pride
Let's zero this out. Really hurts the pride there. Right in the feels. True test. Trying to do something so tight. More realistic to the, the bolts themselves. That fits in, so that's a decent result. Now we're going to take measurements and pop the other two holes in it. Now we got to get these two holes. Two, one. And then off the side. Two six five. Let me get a drill bit size. I want something kind of tiny. So I don't want to. That's reasonable. So I don't want to overshoot because I'm just kind of spitballing this. So I don't want to go too big and then lose my holes because uh, I fucked that up. So, or lose the uh, O-ring holes because I have to make O-ring holes, which is doable, but more of a pain in the ass. <laughs> Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave this here. Uh, let me get a 10 30 second tap and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna drill and tap this then before I move it just to keep it all in the same spot. So I'm not trying to move the tap and trying to find this hole again. 
All right, so I'm gonna drill this and then tap it just a little bit. <laughs> There's a bottoming tap. A bit of nature's nectar. Just want to set it with that. And we'll come back and uh, further tap it. But let's go back to zero. Zero. Now let's hit the other one. Point four seven eight. Point four seven eight. Point one two. Relatively right, I think. Let's uh, give it a test. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, here's hoping. <laughs>
That should might do that backwards, which would really be stupid of me. Yep. I did that backwards. I got this whole thing again. Same concept. Uh, I got to do the opposite of what I just did here. Because that is not the mirror. So, gonna leave this off here tonight. It's the same thing. I'm gonna just do this on my own. And, uh, yeah, well, you get the concept of what I'm doing. It's not very difficult. I just have to remember to invert all of these dimensions. Or else, uh, yep, that happens. Alright, guys. I'm gonna leave it off for here. I'm gonna redo this tomorrow night and uh, pick up the video from there. Alright, I will see you guys.